So the methodology needs to be transparent, needs to be replicable, you need to be easy to follow the methodology so that you end up with that same dish. <laughs>
uh, advisory committees. We actually have an ESG advisory committee who is helping us with the evolution of, of those methodologies. We also have uh, indices that are linked to our so-called green taxonomy or green revenues. Mm. Uh, and again, we use the percentage of green revenues that a company is generating as a percentage of the total revenues to uh, separate those companies that are included in the indices and those that are not included in the indices. Um, so just going, talking about digital assets, could you give us an example of a few digital asset indices that you, you currently have and uh, how long have they been around and uh, do you foresee many more coming, uh, coming, for, you know, coming up soon? So we start with actually the very basic one. So we have uh, launched the FTSE Bitcoin index indeed, the FTSE Cardano, FTSE Ethereum index it was last year. What we're now working on is the combination of uh, indices that have several digital assets and indices that have a combination of a digital asset with a non-digital asset. So for example, a commodity, uh, can we combine gold with an, an, uh, a digital asset? So now you see the different permutations uh, taking place. It's, of course, with that come more complexity and different type of questions that we need to, uh, need to answer. So now multi-asset combinations, that's what's, uh, what's now emerging uh, at the moment. Um, now you say you're up to over a million different indices, which I, is, it blows my mind, it's an extraordinarily high number. How has that number changed over the past few years and do you feel that that's going to just continue to rise? It's definitely going to, to rise, uh, although sometimes we also decommission indices where we say we're not, oh, really? no longer using them. Um, but what we want to offer is just choice, right? choice to uh, asset managers, choice to asset owners. And as uh, their desire to change things is evolving, we'll simply adjust and introduce new indices. Mm -hmm. uh, another big drive is actually regulation. And that's what we see in the, in the space of sustainable investing, uh, where, uh, for example, in uh, the EU, uh, the so-called EU taxonomy has introduced a certain jargon, certain names, certain definitions. And with that comes, uh, in fact, an imposition on, on how products should look like. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, there is uh, the so-called Paris of Line benchmarks um, that impose a certain decarbonization trajectory, meaning that uh, companies that are in the index need to reduce their carbon footprint by at least 7% every single year. Now, that actually mm -hmm. comes from regulation directly, meaning that if we have indices that we call Paris of Line benchmark, they need to meet those criteria. Mm -hmm. um, I also think of your business as somewhat of a solutions business as well. Um, you look for what investors need to be able to express their investment views in certain ways. So what do you feel that um, investors um, are most sort of interested in uh, sort of right now? I mean, is there a huge amount of demand for digital asset indices or do you see other areas where investors are, are more interested in seeing more indices? The question of, of digital assets, I think, is also a question of curiosity. People want to understand what is the space, what is the true opportunity. Mm. And it's not just uh, digital assets, but also what does decentralized finance means for business models, uh, for financial services. I think that's a question we generally get, and that's something we also want to understand from, from our partners and other stakeholders in the financial mm. uh, ecosystem. A lot of, I guess, what you do is quite investor demand-led. So, so they basically suggest to you that, you know, I really wish I had something more related to um, natural gas or something more to oil or certain different geographies. So I'm just wondering, it's a sort of uh, chicken and eggs, the wrong expression, but um, like who leads who in terms of product design? Do you, do you come up with new products because you think investors will like them? Or do, you think, or do investors come to you and say, we want this kind of solution? It's a combination. Of course, uh, we're listening to what our clients are asking and uh, what they're concerned <coughs> about. But at the same uh, hand, we're also trying to understand where uh, the future questions they might come with and pre prepare to answer those already in advance. Um, at the moment, we're getting questions around inflation. A lot of concern about rising inflation and mm -hmm. what it actually means. It sure. uh, means for uh, emerging markets, what it means for uh, certain styles in the, the way that people are invested. Uh, and of course, we're trying to um, answer the question on the, the, which indices are more sensitive to uh, particular regimes. Uh, mm -hmm. So in that sense, we're trying to give some kind of framework and, and, uh, and, and that will hopefully uh, provide a solution for, uh, for our clients. Now, David, I know you, you used to be a portfolio manager yourself and um, <clears throat> um, the old uh, stock portfolio construction was the 60-40 portfolio. But that's had a very difficult time this year, the first time it's had such a, a tough time in a while. Um, I just wonder if you think that 
these indices allow portfolio managers out there to create more diversification because a lot of the old models don't seem to be working right now. And now is a very difficult time to be investing generally. But do you think that's another aspect of indices which maybe people don't quite grasp is that it does give you an easy way to diversify your portfolio if that's what you'd like to do? I have to be always careful with that question because I'm no longer a portfolio manager and, uh, <laughs> and meaning that uh, as an index provider we are uh, uh, not allowed to provide investment advice. Right, uh, okay, but what, 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 we, what I can say is that we offer options and effectively work with clients uh, together in trying to understand if they want to express certain investment strategies. You know, how can you use an index to, mm. to do so? Uh, and that comes back to my earlier comment, if you have over a million indices, there must be something out there that <laughs> hopefully uh, a combination of those will uh, allow them to provide some kind of portfolio that is resilient and robust enough for what investors want to achieve. Um, I mean, another trend we're seeing, uh, I assume it, we're going to see it for a while, is, is rising interest rates. Are there, other, are there options for people to take advantage of rising interest rates through one of your indices? For that particular scenario, um, I, I guess the, the big question is always how much exposure people want to have to, to fixed income. I mean, right. uh, and then, of course, uh, if you look at the world of, of equities, which type of indices are more exposed to rising interest rates than, than others? So we do have discussions around uh, emerging markets. We have discussions around uh, dividend stocks uh, right. and, and with those kind of trying to address some of the concerns that, uh, that investors have. So um, not drawing any investment advice from you, uh, as I know you can't do that, but in talking to your clients right now, um, we've mentioned uh, inflation, uh, we've mentioned rising interest rates. What are the, some of the other um, issues that you think clients are most sort of worried or apprehensive about at the moment? Sustainable investing, we've, we've touched it uh, yeah. very briefly before, um, and that is very much related to the objective of, of companies and governments to transition to a net zero uh, economy. Mm -hmm. And with that, clients want to understand what does that mean and how do I implement it? How do I express that? Um, so we've done a lot of work around um, transition pathways, the so-called mm -hmm. TPI indices that we have launched. Uh, we have indices where we uh, measure, of course, the, the carbon uh, footprint of. Um, as a matter of fact, on the website, when you look at all our sustainable investment indices, we give information and metrics on ESG scores, carbon footprint profiles. I think the first step, which is very important for investors, is to have an understanding uh, of what they actually hold. Mm -hmm. I think we play a very instrumental role in providing that transparency. Right. Uh, what is the carbon footprint profile of an index? What's an ESG score of an index? And what does it mean and how you can adjust the portfolio exposures to help and get a particular profile? I see. And you know, when it comes to the, I mean, we talked a bit about the E, but the S and the G as well. Some of these companies, um, you know, whether it's uh, gender equality or, or pay gap, you can go on to uh, your website or your indices and see how you are uh, sort of equating the, the different weights to the different parts of the ESG sort of makeup. That's correct. I mean, you, you can look at the different uh, steps that people want to take. I mean, there's broadly, I would say, three steps. The first step is they want to exclude companies uh, that they believe are involved in, in controversial activity. So mm -hmm. based on certain um, uh, sectors or based on certain activities, they say, I want to exclude companies from a, a particular index. Mm -hmm. The second step is what they can take is where they have a portfolio but want to take limited tracking error by tilting a portfolio towards a certain way, meaning that they want to get a rough exposure to an equity market, for example, but with more attractive features, for example, with a lower carbon footprint profile mm. or with a, a higher ESG score. And then the third step is indeed where you want to take a, a, a very specific pointed view, perhaps where you have a higher tracking error, and then indeed uh, points on the S and G, gender equality, or perhaps one of these uh, Paris Align benchmark or the uh, climate transition benchmark, uh, where you have a large tracking error, but uh, a, a very specific objective in mind, a very specific target in mind related to sustainable investing. Well, I always think that transparency is a good thing, and it sounds like it's exactly what FTSE is doing when, uh, uh, when allowing investors to look inside these companies. So um, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, David, well, listen, I've enjoyed our chat so much. Thank you very much for coming in to talk to us, and uh, thank you again. Thank you, Jamie.